This brave young man is about to have the oxygen supply to his brain temporarily turned off. His heart will falter. The doctors in attendance concede that it could even stop. And while all this is going on, he'll actually weigh over half a ton. All right, I need your name and rank. Name, Darren L. Petrie. Rank, Senior Airman. Senior Airman Pete Petrie is a research volunteer at the Aero Medical Center at Brooks Air Force Base in Texas. In this experiment, his body will be subject to nine times the force of gravity in what must be the world's most grueling roller coaster ride, the centrifuge. Scientists here are seeking answers to questions of grave military concern. Can today's fighter pilots cope with the physical and psychological demands placed upon them in combat? Or have we designed a generation of fighters so technologically advanced that they push the pilot beyond the limits of human physiology? Somehow the biology never got into the picture. They wanted, they dealt with the technology of conquering the problems of flight. And the engineers who build airplanes today are still basically the same kind of person. They're solving physics problems, engineering problems, uh, power thrust curve problems. Uh, they're not dealing with biology. And as a matter of fact, I think this is one of the definers of our current dilemma. We didn't have to up until this point in time. And now the technology has reached a point where uh, it's not just that we're gonna lose a pilot because the plane fails or something, but we're going to lose pilots because they can't operate the systems that are being presented to them. Nowadays, when a fighter pilot climbs into the cockpit of a high-performance jet, he's charged with the awesome responsibility of operating some of the most complex machinery ever devised at speeds that would outstrip a rifle bullet. He will be pushed to the edge of his physical and intellectual limits and tradition demands that he respond with the right stuff. But this image of the pilot, gleaned from the exploits of the aces of past wars, ignores the reality of aerial combat today. As these highly trained pilots know, their own human frailty may be more of a threat than the enemy in today's complex and powerful high-performance jets. We believe that the pilot's workplace is perhaps the most demanding office in the world. Not only must the pilot attend to all the information that's presented on, on a myriad of controls and displays, he has to do this while being shot at, pulling G's, worrying about getting killed. Example of an almost religious belief in a technology that is in danger of overwhelming today's fighter pilot because the horrifyingly short life expectancy of a World War I fighter pilot was a chillingly brief 17 hours in the air. Nowadays, that logic also confronts the pilot with his own physical limitations. Turning corners in an airplane at speed produces G's, the forces that mimic gravity. G-forces have been a factor in aerial combat since World War I, but today's fighters are so fast and so maneuverable that the high G's they inflict on the pilot's body and brain can seriously impair his flying ability. Commander Charles Heater Heatley describes the sensation of G's. It feels like a great weight pressing down on you. The more you pull back on the stick, the harder it presses down. And what you feel is the oxygen mask pressing on your nose. You feel the skin coming down on your face. Uh, sweat from your brow just seems to come down in currents in front of your eyes. As soon as it pops out of your forehead, it goes straight down uh, in front of your eyes. And you can feel your lungs being pressed on your diaphragm and you just sort of scrunch into the seat. And in fact, I notice after a first couple turns in an ACM engagement, I can raise my seat a little bit and get a little more height in the cockpit because what was normal is now uh, a couple inches less than normal. 
But there is far more to G's than discomfort or being able to change your seating position. With the power available to today's fighter pilot, he can turn and turn until he runs out of gas, and sustaining high G's for more than a second or two brings other less welcome physiological effects. You start to see dots out here, and it starts to close in, and color goes away. So when things start turning into black and white, you start letting loose of the stick. And if you keep pulling, you get what's called tunnel vision. You can only see an area about this big. And if you continue to pull, everything goes black. And when it goes black, you can still hear the radio, you still know you're flying, you still know you're in an airplane, and it is now time to unload and get the blood back in your head. If you don't get back off the stick, pretty soon, not only will you lose your vision, you'll lose consciousness, and then you have uh, G-induced loss of consciousness. If it were possible to see inside a pilot's brain when he is subject to high G's, we would see that the principal problem was one of oxygen starvation. Like other cells in his body, brain cells need oxygen. Oxygen-rich blood is pumped by the heart into the exquisitely fine circuitry of the cerebrovascular system. But when exposed to high G's, that blood begins to weigh more. At about four or five times the force of gravity, the heart's pumping action ceases to be effective and the blood pressure in the head falls to zero. This denies the brain cells the oxygen that's vital to their continued activity. And within three seconds, they stop functioning and the pilot lapses into unconsciousness. The big problem is that most people, especially in single-seat fighters, don't know they've had the event. They just feel a little bit dizzy or whatever. Nowadays, uh, the F-16, which is behind me, and the F-15 and others have videotapes, and it records the whole flight out there. So now, uh, because the information is better, even though you're in a single-seat fighter, uh, we can play the videos back and say, holy cow, I was asleep during this period of time. For the video you're about to see, holy cow would be an understatement. Were it not for the fact that this recording, specially cleared for Nova, was acquired during a training mission in a two-seater aircraft, the following sequence, the aircraft it was recorded in, and the pilot flying the plane, would not be around today. In this first frame of the recording, we see the New Mexico desert from a height of 24,000 feet, shown on the right vertical scale. The speed is displayed on the left vertical and shows 420 knots. The G rating is displayed as a figure at the top of the left-hand scale. For the moment, while the plane is in a gentle left-hand turn, it reads 1.2 G. The air combat instructor, sitting in the back seat, identifies an intruding aircraft at right 130. The pilot commences a fast, hard pull further to the left. It's a 7G pull, and it hurts. That last groan has since been analyzed as the moment when the student pilot lost consciousness. But the instructor in the back seat doesn't know that yet. All he sees is the desert floor rushing towards him. He decides to call the pilot's attention to the fact. The G reading is now back to normal, around 1 G, and the pilot is recovering, but not quickly enough. The cool instructor offers some more advice. The plane is now doing nearly 500 knots straight down towards the sun-baked rocks below. Realizing at last what's happened, the instructor pulls the aircraft out of its lethal dive and finds time to give vent to his feelings. Damn it. It's now estimated that over 20 pilots have died in the last five years as a result of accidents due to losing consciousness under the excessive G-forces of the new super agile fighters. Here at Brooks Air Force Base, a comprehensive research program is being conducted in the centrifuge to establish the exact nature of the way the body responds to G's and the full extent of the pilot's incapacitation. What they've discovered is that many of today's fighters can subject the pilot to up to nine...